Hi, my name is Kathy Stoponius. I am a general manager in the Xbox division, and I manage uh, the, the global team that brings entertainment app partners onto the Xbox Live service. So, Kathy, what does the Xbox One console open up for gaming? Um, what it opens up for gaming is basically, uh, you know, is sort of taking gaming to, to the next level with uh, the power of the console that we bring, the ability, the power that the cloud brings, um, you know, the, the ability to create persistent worlds, um, given all that the, you know, the, the, the fact that you're constantly kind of connected to the, to the cloud. Um, uh, the horsepower of the box itself is substantially larger, bigger. Um, and uh, between that and sort of, you know, you're not only sort of uh, defined by the horsepower of the box itself, but also the horsepower that you can actually sort of harness from um, from the, the cloud. Can you talk about the horsepower compared to the Xbox 360? Um, so compared to the Xbox 360, I think we had, uh, when you think about things like RAM, uh, 512 megs of RAM, uh, 8 gigs on the Xbox One. Um, we are going to have uh, basically half a terabyte of space uh, and on the actual hard drive that comes with, uh, with the Xbox One. I um, believe Xbox 360, 5 million transistors, 5 billion um, on the Xbox One. It's probably some of the stats you've heard earlier uh, today. Uh, so, I mean, multiple, multiple folds. And obviously, again, sort of, not sort of keep harping on the, on the cloud, but sort of really kind of harnessing the, the power of the cloud. I think you might have heard Mark Witten talk about, you know, 300,000 servers, basically, in terms of, uh, you know, what's going to be available in terms of the size of the cloud versus, I believe, 15,000 with respect to 360. Now, one of the bigger questions is, what type of backwards compatibility would the Xbox One have? Well, when it comes to, to games and actually even to entertainment apps, there won't be backwards compatibility. You know, basically this is a new modern architecture, so you have to sort of build um, for this new platform. Um, so, but that said, you know, hopefully the experiences uh, that we'll be able to bring to bear both with games and entertainment um, will basically sort of make that a worthwhile investment, both for our, you know, our partners as well as the consumer. Will Xbox Live Arcade games and games on demand be able to transfer to Xbox One? We'll have more information later on that. How will the Connect push things beyond what current games can do? Um, I think a lot of that uh, remains to be seen. I'm sorry to kind of keep sort of uh, bringing entertainment into this as well because that's sort of the lens that I look at uh, uh, look at things. But uh, first of all, the, the Connect itself is, is a lot more powerful um, in terms of uh, it, it, how it can see, you know, when it can see in different sort of uh, literally all sorts of light conditions, uh, broader field of depth, um, you know, the ability to kind of see with a lot more precision, you know, things like, you know, your facial expressions, digit movement, etc. cetera. Um, there are, you know, that's, we're going to be giving our partners both entertainment as well as gaming publishers the ability to kind of harness that. Um, and, you know, it, you know we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what kind of experiences uh, they create, right? Certainly sort of new experiences that we've never, you know, we've never had before. Sort of it'll take sort of this, the accessibility, I think, of games and entertainment as it relates to natural user interface to a completely different level. Now, the first Connect, you needed a lot of room for it to read you. Was that, has that been improved in the new Connect? Um, yes, I believe it has, right? Um, uh, you know, as far as, it, it, again, sort of broader depth, um, you know, we've sort of designed it you know, some of the feedback that we had gotten, it was, you know, hard for, you know, sort of in terms of to see children. Um, and so now sort of in terms of the, the, the depth perception that it has, as well as the field, you know, sort of the, the range of the field that you can actually see, it makes that um, a lot easier uh, for it to sort of see kids, as well as just more people, um, generally speaking, right? You know, you see as many as six people sort of playing at, at, at any one time. So, so six people in a family, the Connect will be able to track, will be able to track all of them and their preferences? Uh, more about that in E3. How does the new Xbox One controller open up new uh, with gameplay, like the new controller? More, more of that at E3. Oh, okay. How is Smart Glass being? Um, how is Smart Glass being advanced to work with the new console? So uh, one of the things about Xbox One is, and Smart Glass was that Smart Glass was basically um, envisioned to be one of the sort of the premier sort of second screen experience as far as the Xbox One is concerned. So part of what will come along with that is the ability to have uh, greater uh, uh, control experiences in terms of things like being able to turn your, you know, not only the, the Xbox on, but uh, turning on your TV set, you know, sort of controlling your Blu-ray experience. You'll be able to sort of search uh, the program guide, for example, 
um, while not interrupting what's what what's actually being sort of shown on the, the, the on the television set. And it'll also be um, a lot more seamless in terms of the sort of the connection that it has. Uh, you know, when it's sort of as soon as as soon as it knows that there's a smart glass application that's been lit up in the in the room. Now, obviously, it'll work with Windows 8 tablets. Would it also be compatible with iOS and Android tablets? Certainly today we have smart glass available on iOS and Android, so I think you can continue to ex you should expect that that's going to continue in the future for the sort of the new version for Xbox One. Can you talk about how Microsoft is working with developers around the world to implement the next gen games? More at E3. Can you talk about some of the games that were shown at the reveal? M more at E3, I think. How do you see Remedy's Quantum Break uh, bridging the gap between entertainment and gaming? So we'll have a demo at E3 that we'll be able to show you a lot more about that. How is EA Sports, how is EA Sports working with Microsoft on Xbox One? More at E3. <laughs>